says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Welcome to another video by Dr. J. Harold Smith. The title of today's video is Watching Jesus Die. The short verse in Matthew 27, 36 is the inspiration for this sermon, and Dr. Smith discusses the crowd that had gathered to watch the crucifixion. In that crowd, there were friends and family, and there were also enemies of Jesus who had come to see what was going on. There were some who understood better than others what was happening, but none of them really understood the significance of what they were seeing and what it meant. As Jesus was dying on the cross that day, the history of mankind was changed forever. God was making a way to finally defeat sin and death. In this sermon, Dr. Smith encourages all of us to look at the cross and to ponder what it means for our own lives. And now, here is Dr. Smith with the sermon, Watching Jesus Die. And sitting down they watched him there. And I'm going to use for our theme in this message, watching Jesus die, or watching God die. I cannot tell you what an impression it made upon me the first time that I read those verses just a few days after the Lord had saved me on September the 4th, 1932. I had never read the Bible through. I did not know one verse of Scripture when the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. And when He saved me, He called me to preach, and I knew that whatever I was going to do about preaching, I would have to know what is in this book. I believe with all of my heart every word in the Bible, every word of it. And I started reading with the first chapter of Matthew. And when I read that wonderful and marvelous verse in the 36th verse of the 27th chapter, I was simply amazed to think about people sitting down watching a man, a God like Jesus Christ die. Have you ever stopped to think about it? On that cross was the creator of the heavens and the earth. Everything that was made was made by the Lord Jesus Christ. And when I stopped to think about it, on that wooden cross, hanging that day when all of the people gathered around Golgotha, and when they gathered on that mount to watch three men be crucified, when I stopped to think about it, I am absolutely overcome with amazement. Here we see in this crowd that gathered we see a mob. We see some of his friends. Perhaps in that crowd stood a man that he had opened his eyes so he could see. Perhaps in that crowd stood a man that was dying with leprosy when he met the Lord Jesus, and the Lord cleansed him from that leprosy. Perhaps in that crowd that was watching Jesus die, there was a woman who had for years been bent double by the devil, and the Lord had delivered her. Perhaps there was in that crowd watching him die that woman that he had stopped the issue of blood where she had spent all of her livelihood, all of her living, trying to get well and nothing helped. Have you ever stopped long enough just to take one minute look at the cross and at the wonderful Redeemer and the Savior as he died that day upon the cross? Surely, I tell you, if you were to ever stop and look at that cross, you would never again doubt that He is indeed the Son of God. On that cross that day was dying a man, a man that called himself the Son of God. A man was dying on that cross today that God said, This is my beloved Son, hear ye Him. Dying upon that cross that day was the little baby that was born in Bethlehem on that first Christmas day. Dying upon that cross that day was the man that preached the marvelous, wonderful sermon that is found in Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7 of that wonderful gospel. No other sermon had ever been preached like that sermon. 
dying on that cross that day and perhaps in that crowd watching him die were some of those people, brother, that he had fed when they were hungry with fish and loaves. What if the Lord Jesus Christ had never died upon that cross? What if he had never come in the first place? And what if the Lord Jesus Christ who was dying upon that cross had never died upon that cross? And what if after he was buried, he had never come out of the tomb? Where would you be? Where would I be? Where would the world be? Where would the souls of men and women that, are die, that have died in the Lord, where would they be? What if the Lord Jesus Christ was never going to come again to this earth and never settle up all of the miscarriages of justice, settle up all of the problems and heartaches of this earth? There is no way that the problems of this world can ever be solved by a united nation and by a group of presidents, a group of dictators, a group of rulers in this world. The only way that this world will ever be straightened out and the affairs of this world is for the Lord Jesus Christ to come again. And he's coming and he's coming soon. So as we watch in these next few moments, the Lord Jesus Christ die, I hope that your eyes will be open to see that this is indeed the wonderful and only way that you could ever get to heaven. Jesus Christ, he said himself, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, and no man. Does that include you? Does that include you? No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Never has been but one way, never will be but one way. And if you refuse that way, you will certainly perish and die. And what an awful, terrible thing your future is, only to lift up your eyes forever and ever in the lake of fire, tormented day and night, if you reject this wonderful Savior. So as we look at this, I want you to notice at that cross that day, watching Jesus die, were some friendly watchers. There was his mother, his precious mother, the virgin born son of God by a virgin. And here she stands by the cross, a wonderful, marvelous, God chosen mother for the Lord Jesus Christ. In her body, God had built the body of the Lord Jesus Christ and made his body different from my body and your body. It was the only body, the only body that ever died, that ever lived, that ever died and never sinned. All other babies have been born in iniquity with the exception of the Lord Jesus Christ. And standing now in that crowd, watching him, die, watching him die is his mother. Not only is his mother there, but the disciples are there. Most of them are there. One of them is missing. He was not in fact a disciple. He was Judas. And the Lord himself said, have I not chosen you 12 and one of you, one of you is a devil. And he knew that G Judas was a devil from the very beginning. The disciples were all to see, but not Jesus. And so Judas wasn't in that crowd watching him die. He was out there putting a rope around his neck ready to plunge off of a cliff and hang himself. What a terrible tragedy. Jesus Christ said it would have been better had he never been born. And I believe with all of my heart that it would have been better had you died the day and the second that you were born if you die without the Lord Jesus Christ. And so standing in that crowd were not only his mother and the disciples, but all of those that he had healed, the blind, the lame, the leper, the wretched, miserable people that he had helped. There they stood, trembling and in anxiety, watching him die and not understanding why is this good man? I can understand why that man on his right is dying. I can understand why that woman, uh, that man on the left side is dying, but why is he dying? He never murdered anybody. He never did anybody any harm. He never committed a sin, not one sin. Even his worst enemies were not able to, pr to prove that he'd ever sinned. And there they all stand, 
the friendly watchers watching him die. The holy angels are watching him die. And God, the heavenly Father, is watching until finally, brother, seeing Jesus take upon himself and becoming sin for us, our heavenly Father could not look at him and turned his back upon him. And he said, my God, my God, why art thou forsaking me? Why have you forsaken me? He could not look upon sin even when it was born by the sinless one, by the Savior and the Redeemer. And then we find that the sun and the moon and the stars watched and the sun pulled a cloud over her face. And my friends, the moon could not, could not look down upon that scene. What a terrible scene. And then there were the unfriendly watchers. They're watching him die, the priest. I'm amazed. I'm amazed when I think about the religious leaders of that day watching Jesus die and rejoicing in his death. The religious leaders were all there and they were mocking him. The members of the Sanhedrin were perhaps there and the men of the temple were there. And the word of God tells us that the soldiers and the mob all were watching him die. They were anxious to see that this one died when Pilate said, what shall I do with the Lord Jesus? They said, crucify him, kill him, get him out of our community and out of our city and out of our country, crucify him. Now why and what they saw, what did they see that day? They, say the, they saw the only man who ever wore a crown of thorns, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They saw that man dying that day they saw in their imagination a foolish pretender, one that pretended to be the Son of God, one that pretended to be and said that he was God manifest in the flesh. The one they're watching die is the one that said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. So we are seeing this misguided, and they look at him as a misguided man, as a man that was deceived by the devil and a man that they said committed blasphemy. Uh, they said, we are watching a glutton die. We are watching a child that was born out of wedlock die. We are watching a man that deceived, multiplied thousands die. They were the unfriendly watchers. They were watching at the cross that day. Now what and what they might have seen if they had looked carefully, they would have seen a coronation instead of a crucifixion. They would have seen a man that was paying the price for my sins and your sins. They were seeing and looking upon a man, that the only one that we could bear in, in his own body, our sins and our iniquity. They saw the earth's greatest sacrifice being offered on the altar of God. They saw and could have seen a triumphant victory Instead of seeing a vicious death, they could have seen a triumphant victory. Yes, I tell you, they could have seen eternal joy, a rejoicing forevermore that the Son of God no longer would have to die and no longer would have to come and pay a price for my sins and your sins. Once and for all, Jesus died upon the cross. There won't be a second crucifixion. When he comes again, he's not going to be spit upon. They're not going to pluck out part of the hair of his face. They're not going to slap him in the face and say, prophesy if you're a prophet. Who slapped you? Who, who was it that hit you? No, sir. When he comes the next time, the Bible says he's coming out of heaven riding upon a white horse. And my friends on the sides of that horse are written, holiness unto the Lord, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. They could have watched and they could have seen one of the greatest incidents in the history of man. There is nothing any greater than that crucifixion that took place that day just outside of the Eastern gates of Jerusalem they saw our wonderful Lord breathe his last breath. They saw his, nail, his hands ripped open by nails. 
They saw his side split open by a spear. They saw his head crowned with thorns. They saw his back torn by the whip of the scourger's hand. They saw his feet as they were welded to that piece of wood by a spike. They saw all of that. And yet I tell you, they turned away from the cross and went away to live their lives of shame and sin and die without ever confessing and without ever naming the Lord Jesus as their Redeemer. It's not enough just to watch him die. It's not enough, my dear friends, just to say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It's not enough just to say that I know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That's not enough. It's not enough, my dear friends, for you to go to church and join the church and be baptized and, and give maybe a, a your tithe. That's not enough. You've got to, by faith, believe that the blood that was shed upon that cross that day when they sat there and watched him die, you've got to believe that that blood is the only thing in all of the universe that can cleanse you from your sins. You've got to believe that the, there is no other way but by the way of the cross that leads home. You've got to believe that or perish forever. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is so plain and simple until a fool, though a wayfaring fool, will not err therein. If the Lord had a given a plan of salvation that was complicated, and we had to know Greek and Hebrew and Latin, and we had to know mathematics and history in order that we might be able to understand that plan, we could understand why some die without the Lord Jesus Christ and go to hell. But the gospel is as simple as two times two is four. It's as simple as A, B, C. And you may sit through eternity and watch the Savior die and never go to heaven. Why? Because that is not the way of salvation. So as we look here in the Word of God, we find that we are looking at the sinless one die upon that cross. The Lord Jesus Christ got victory over sin, over the flesh, over the devil. The only person that ever walked upon the face of this earth or ever was born a woman that never sinned. And then we see not only the sinless one, but we see dying upon that cross, the Son of God. This is my beloved Son. Nowhere else in all of the Bible can you find those words addressed to any other person. Not to Abraham, not to Isaac, not to Jacob, not to Elijah, my friends, not to Jeremiah or Isaiah, but only to Jesus. This is my beloved son. So we see dying upon that cross as we sit there watching that day, the son of God. And we see the dying upon that cross, the sinless one. And then we find the only Savior of the world, the only one, my dear friends, who can lead captives into freedom, and the only one that can set the sinner free from his iniquity. Are you bound up by sin? Are you weighted down by the load of iniquity? Do you wake up in the middle of the night wishing you could die? Are you on the verge of committing suicide? Do you see no other way out? I want to offer you a way. Just sit there for a moment and look at that cross and see the one that's dying upon that cross. And I tell you on my word of honor, after preaching for all of these many years since, since September the 4th or 17th, 1932, preaching this book and studying this book, I tell you on my word of honor, that he, Jesus, can save you. It matters not who you are. It matters not where you live. It matters not what your standing or social position may be. It doesn't make any difference what your political uh, affirmatives are or what your political associations are. It doesn't make any difference how you, what your standing is in the community. Our Lord 
is the only one that can save you. And if you're a banker and lost, the Lord can save you. If you, stand, if you are the most tremendous athlete that has ever lived in this part of the world, he can save you. It matters not if you're the poorest man or the poorest woman or you have the least education. There are some that cannot write, some that cannot read, but you can hear and you can understand. And I, as I come into your home and look into your face, I want to tell you on the authority of this book that if you will just trust that man that we are now watching die upon the cross, if you will just trust him, you'll find this life evermore. And as we look here, we find then the Son of God, the sinless one, the only Savior of the earth dying upon that cross. As you watch him die, as you watch him die, what do you see? Do you just see another man? Do you just see a man that claimed something that he could never prove? Do you just see someone hanging there upon that cross that you have heard from your childhood was God manifested wrapped up in the skin of a man. And yet I tell you, you just think it's some sort of a joke, some sort of a silly story that somebody dreamed up one day. If you have that idea, and if that is your thinking and your thoughts, I want to tell you, you're deceived by the devil. And the devil is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Will you come to Jesus or will you just sit there and watch him die? Let the TV program change into something else in a moment and forget all about this message. But I hope that as you go to your bed or as you go about your job, you'll see before your eye that wonderful, marvelous Jesus hanging upon that cross, blood running out of his hands, blood oozing from around the thorns in his head, his back brother dripping with a thousand wounds from the scourger's whip, and his feet bound to that cross by a spike. And then see the soldier as he takes his spear and thrusts it into his side, and you see him quiver. You hear him groan, and he cries out, Father, into thy hands I do commend my spirit and bows his wonderful, glorious head and says, it is finished. I want to tell you, if you neglect him, if you refuse him, if you will not accept him, you will die in your sins and go to hell. God forbid. Father, take this message and use it for thy glory. In Jesus' name, amen. For most at the cross that day, they did not know that they were watching a sinless man die. They did not know that he was the Son of God. And they did not know that he was the Savior of the world. And if they chose to follow him, he could be their Savior. When we see the cross, do we see those things, the perfect, sinless Son of God, the Savior of all who believe? If we choose to follow Him, He can be our Savior too and can free us from sin and allow us to find forgiveness before God. Do you know Him? Is He your Savior? Look at the cross today and accept the gift of grace that was given to you and to me on that day. You'll not regret choosing to follow Him. Thank you for watching today. If you would like to know more about this work, go to the web address on your screen. This is Don Smith, and again, I want to thank you for watching this video today. And may the Lord bless you in every area of your life.